Now we're going to take our game and we're going to add another element to it. So you have your picture, your small picture that you can move around using your arrow keys. And now we need some kind of other object for it to fall on it so they can either avoid it or basically eat it. So I'm, I made just a quick little cherry. I'm going to add this to my code. So I just did two lines. I have a circle that's red and a line for the stem that's brown. So you can use my code if you like, or you can take a few minutes and draw your own little object that you'd like to fall from the sky. Or you can start with the cherry and then kind of change it. So right now I don't have any variables in there. It's just going to be drawing a circle in the line. I'm going to come here to my draw and uh, draw the cherry. So you can see that I drew it in the upper left hand corner. This is where you should start anything because then when you add in your X's and Y's it can kind of go over. If you started over here it would be difficult to make it come further to the left. So if you start in the very upper corner closest to the origin that's going to be the easiest way to move your, your image all the way around. So I put my image weight right up there in the corner. So you can use this line of code if you'd like or you can make up your own. But once I have it just the way I want it, I'm going to need to add in some variables. So just like we did for the smiley, I'm going to add in my X plus and my Y plus. I'm going to do that wherever there's an X and a Y. So that's going to be basically my ordered pairs. The first one's always X and the second one's always Y. So the circle just had one set right here and the line has two sets, so make sure you do it twice. So now that I have variables in here, I'm going to need to pass them in. So I'm going to add in these two parameters, my X and Y. Now when I call the, ch the cherry, I'm also going to need the X and the Y, but I don't have an X and a Y. So I want to do something like I did for my circle. I had a pick position, and I picked a location to start the picture and I wanted to start it right in the middle of the screen and I had a velocity. Well we're going to need something like this for our cherry. So I'm just going to call it chair position and I'm going to start it at zero zero but we will change this and so now I have a list that I can use like I did for my picture. So down here where it says canvas and I'm calling my cherry, I'm going to do chair. Oops, I need my mouse here. Chair position with um, the first element zero for my X and chair position one for my Y. Now it should have the exact same result that we had before. But I didn't do my plus here. So once again, make sure that you're being very careful. Okay, so it was just the same, but it is different because I've added in some variables. So it actually makes some changes here. I want my cherry to fall straight down. So that's going to be my Y value. So remember, X's go across, Y's go down. So if I want it to go down, I'm going to increment my Y. And my Y happens to be my chair position of the second element. I'm going to come in here to draw. And I'm also going to be uh, changing my chair position. So let's make this global. I've incremented pick position 0 and 1. And so let's increment my cherry position. But I just need to do the second one. I, if I wanted to go diagonally, I can move both of them. If I wanted to go just to the left, to the right, I would just change zero. I want it to go just down, so I'm going to change one. And I'm just going to increment it by a little bit. Maybe I do it by two, but we're going to be talking about making an acceleration in a minute. Let's just see what happens. So there it goes. Now it's going to keep going because I haven't added in a stopping point yet. It's just going to kind of keep going. So, how can I get the cherry to stop and kind of start over again when it hits the bottom? I'm going to be taking a look at this cherry position. That's the Y value. And remember, X's go across and Y's go down. So I'm just going to be taking a look at the height of my canvas. When I get to the top of the height, you know, so the highest number, I want it to start over again, go back to zero so it can fall again. I can use an if statement for that. So that's all we've been learning about this semester. If statements are very useful. 
for gaming, for robotics, for just about anything. You're going to be using a lot of if statements. That's what you need. So I only want to increment this if it's not greater than the height. But once I get to the height, I want to make a change. So let's just put in an if statement. So if my cherry position of just the y is less than the height. I don't even need to know what the height is because I've got it here as a global variable, a global constant. I can change the height right here. I'm just going to use the constant throughout my program like I did right here. So if I do happen to change my, my the value of it, I don't have to go throughout my code. Now do I want it to go all the way to the bottom? Probably not quite. So I'm going to say the height maybe minus 10. So it's close to the bottom. If it's not close to the bottom, so it's less than, then I'm going to go ahead and increment. But if it is close, then I want to reset the position. So I'm going to set the position back to zero. It should start at the top. Otherwise, it should keep incrementing. So let's just see. There it goes. Got close to the bottom. It's going to scroll again. So just using an if statement lets me know when I reach the bottom and I'm going to start over again. But this isn't all that exciting because it's in the same position. I want to get a random position. I still want it to start at the top, so my y is going to stay at 0. But I want to get a random x. So it could start kind of anywhere along here. So let's kind of modify our code here. When I'm starting the position, the y position over at 0, I want to get a random x. So I'm going to set the the chair position for the x for a random number. Now in order to do this I better import random. So let's kind of come up here and import my random module. Now I'm going to come over here where I'm getting my random number. Now I can use the random number down here and I know what my values are. I want to go all the way up to width. So I'm going to do random rand range anywhere from 1 to width. And that's where I want my cherry to start. Now I might not want to go all the way to the edge. I might do width minus 10, something like that, so it stays on the canvas. So I'm going to pick a random position for the x, and the y will start at the top, and it will fall. So now it's going to go, pick a random position, go, random position, and all the while I can move my picture around if I want. So I'm only going, my key up and key down only affect my small picture, it doesn't affect the cherry, but they're all running from the draw handler. Now we've got most of the elements of our game right here. There's a couple things that we can do. One thing is get a random position. So we knew it started here in the corner and maybe let's just get around a position for it to start anywhere. And then I can, I'm going to add a button for a new game so that it will reposition my character back to this, the middle and start a random position for my cherry. So just a couple more things here. I'm going to create a function called new game. I'm going to take all of my global variables here and I'm going to just basically assign them values. So I'm going to start with my pick position. And that's exactly what I want it to do. And anytime I pick, click on new game, I want to start in the middle. Now you might pick a different position. So this is where I'm going to have it start, but you can kind of determine what you want its beginning value to be. Then I want to get a random number for the cherry position. I also want the velocity to start at 0, 0, back at the center. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to do kind of like what I did down here in my draw. I'm going to take these two things. This is where I want it to start with y at 0 and a random number for my x. I'm going to put them here. Just get all my indenting correct. So I've got some initial values here for my new game. And everything's going to work great. Oh, let's add a button for this. 
So let's go down to the bottom here where we have all of our frame things. I'm going to add a button. So I'm calling it the reset button. And reset, instead of reset, let's use new game. So I can click on it. I can basically reset everything. I also want to do this at the very, very beginning so it will be random. So I'm going to call new game just before I do the frame start. So it's going to get random everything. And one other thing I can do is a random acceleration for the cherry. So right now, my cherry is always going by 2. But that's going to be kind of predictable in a game. So instead of having it 2, let's put in another variable for the cherry acceleration, and we can make it random as well. So I'm going to, oh, the velocity. So I'm going to set the initial velocity at 2, maybe. But I'm going to come in here to my new game and let's get a random number for this. Now I can do something like rand range 1 to 3 and that's going to give me just a number of 1 or 2. That's not really all that flexible. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to start at 10 and I'm going to go to maybe um, 40. And then I'm going to divide it by 10.0. So this will give me an integer between 1 and 3.9. So that's going to be kind of a more interesting velocity for my cherry. And I'm going to take this code and I'm also going to put it here when I'm redrawing my cherry. So not only do I get a random x position, but let's get a random velocity every time I start over. So you can see I've got a new game button here every time I click it. And start over. I'm going to move my character around. If I click on New Game, everything should start over. Okay, so how come it didn't? There's one thing we forgot to do, and that is make everything global. So I'm going to come back up here to New Game, and all these variables that I am changing the values, let's make them all global. Okay, so I've got four of them, pick position, pick velocity, chair position, and chair velocity. Let's just make them on global, and now, when I run it, and I click on new game, everything starts over, click on new game, start over. So there's lots of little pieces to this puzzle, just have to kind of remember all of them, go slowly, work carefully. We are dealing with global variables now, which we want to avoid at all costs, but sometimes in this interactive world, you just have to deal with them. You want as few as many as you, only as few as you can have. Be careful, because you make changes that you don't realize you make sometimes. And then what we're going to work on next is our collisions and keeping score. So you want to get this to work perfectly, and this is another good time to save your program, keep track of your URL, and we're that much closer to finishing our game.